My name is Marina Babic Mladenovic. I'm coming from Serbia and I would like to present the river engineering in Southeast Europe, specifically in Serbia, and its benefits and faults. In all parts of the world, including Southeast Europe, urban economic and infrastructure systems are always developed in the river valleys. Local river engineering activities started very early in history because people needed to use water resources, protect themselves from floods and move all along or across rivers. The river engineering, including flood protection, became more and more complex over time and increasingly stringent criteria were set for the protection of the growing number of people and continually increasing value of assets in flood-prone areas. The river engineering is the process of undertaking planned activities to alter a river course, riverbed characteristics or the flow regime in order to systematically reduce damages uh, caused by floods or river bank erosion, to create conditions for the use of rivers for navigation, water supply, hydropower generation, irrigation and the like, and protect or promote the river and riparian environments. The response of the nature on river engineering works is difficult and often impossible to fully predict. Now the, the planning of river engineering measures tends to be integrated, sustainable and multidisciplinary and also considering the environmental and social issues. This lecture includes a number of examples of the past river engineering projects in Serbia and reveals their benefits and faults. These are the Iron Gate Hydropower and Navigation System on the Danube River, the Hydropower Plant Zvornik on the Drina River, and the draining of the Velika Morava River upstream of the mouth to Danube. The first part of this lecture is about the effects of the Iron Gate or the Gerda reservoirs on the Danube River environment. The Iron Gate water power and navigation system was completed in 1972 by joint efforts of Yugoslavia and Romania. Uh, the dam of the Iron Gate 1 was constructed on the kilometer ni uh, 942 of the Danube and it created one of the largest reservoirs in the Europe with a total drainage area of more than 500,000 square kilometers. The main purpose of the system was to utilize the considerable water power potential of the Danube and to improve the navigation on a previously difficult reach of the river in the Gerda Gorge. In 1985, a second dam was built 8 kilometers downstream from the first one for additional power production and more flexibility in the joint operation of the two power plants. Each dam of the Iron Gate includes two navigation lock, an earthen non-overflow dam, two hydroelectric power plants, an overflow concrete gravity dam and many other facilities. The construction of the Iron Gate 1 uh, began in 1970 and it was the huge effort of bo both countries after almost 20 years of investigation, studies and designs. The Iron Gate 1 reservoir spreads on a complex river system. At low flow, backwater extends more than 300 kilometers on the Danube, on the Sava and the Tisa rivers, while on high flows, backwater extends about 130 kilometers in comparison to the Danube flow, reservoir has a small volume and hydropower plants uh, runs as a uh, runoff river. The downstream reservoir is small, 80 kilometers long part of the Danube between two large dams. Uh, further, I will discuss only the upstream reservoir. 
Uh, it has a variable height of water levels and the extent of back water. During high flows, the water elevation at the dam is higher uh, than in natural conditions, about 90 meters, and the back water extends to the mouth of the uh, Nera River, where the border of Romania is. Uh, during periods of low flow, the water height of the dam is 33 meters and the backwater extends to the Danube and these uh, uh, big tributaries Sava, Tisa and Morava. Uh, the reservoir uh, has low longitudinal gradients and also the characteristics of the riparian terrain and the river channel are very different along it. The Iron Gate 1 reservoir has two distinct parts. The up downstream part is in the famous Gerda Gorge, where the backwater affects only some localities, small settlements, roads and high river banks. The upstream part of the reservoir extends through lowlands and impacts the river, groundwater and inland water regimes. The water management problems caused by erection of this reservoir were early recognized and adequately addressed by comprehensive protection works and measures. More or less, they are concentrated within the Iron Gate, riparian, Iron Gate 1 riparian area. Uh, but from the very beginning, the regular monitoring and studies of the reservoir's environmental impacts were done, and it comprised nine different programs. The Yaroslav Czerny Water Institute developed a comprehensive multidisciplinary program for the monitoring, measurement and analysis of the reservoir impacts. There are nine specific sub-programs for the monitoring of river flows and backwater levels, groundwater levels and drainage system operation, sediment regime and deposition, ice regime, agricultural land conservation, forests and wetlands, flood control structures, quality of water and sediment, river bank and landslide stability. For each problem, a types and scope on, of investigations were initially defined, but in the course of their implementation, many adjustments and modifications were made. The monitoring started in 1974 and it is ongoing. Monitoring of river flow and backwater levels is a basic program comprising field measurements of water levels and river flow on numerous stations and annual and periodic reports including a comparison of measured and designed backwater levels. The Iron Gate River Rhine areas are protected from the adverse effects of the high groundwater levels by suitable structures and systems. Those are drainage wells, pumping stations and so on. Within this program of monitoring, the groundwater levels and functioning of protection systems are monitored, as this is a special precondition for any land use in the River Rhine areas. Uh, there are 94 systems in operation, mainly in the upstream part of the reservoir. And the one, on the next slide, I will uh, show points and profiles on the Kovin Dubovac area. In the Kovin Dubovac area, the protection system consists of the open drainage channels, open drainage channels with artesian drainage wells built along and pumping stations. Groundwater levels are monitoring on numerous piezometers, yellow painted points. Red lines are profiles used for calculation of groundwater levels. As you can see on this slide, there are different ways for protection of the agriculture areas and urban areas. The agricultural areas are protected with drainage channels and somewhere with uh, channels with wells. But the 
urban areas are mainly protected by uh, lines of drainage wells which are built along the river banks. The comprehensive field investigations of the sediment along the Danube and in its tributaries were done in the 60s. And then the forecast was done in the design phase of the Iron Gate 1 and it indicated that significant modification of the Danube sediment regime would be expected, although development of sediment deposits would be relatively slow, and that such dynamics of sediment deposition will leave us sufficient time for remedial measures to be undertaken in the reservoir or in riparian lands if needed. The sediment monitoring program within the Iron Gate 1 was launched in 1974 and it includes water discharge and suspended load measurements which are done uh, occasionally two to two, three times per year. Suspended sediment concentrations measurements <coughs> are done daily on a number of uh, points. Bed load measurements were abundant. Bulk de density of deposit sediments was investigated uh, two times in the Iron Gate 1 reservoir and also the cross-section survey was done a few times every one to five years. These slides presents the areas where the suspended sediment in the Iron Gate 1 reservoir is monitored. The red dots are present monitoring cross-sections while the yellow ones were used in some period and then abandoned. Every day the samples of water and sediment are taken for, from the river and uh, two to three times per year the cross-sectional measurements are done from the boat. These cross-sectional measurements are used to calculate the average suspended sediment concentration in the river cross section and then the sediment transport. Uh, data from one year are used to make a balance of the suspended sediment within the reservoir. Sediment transport and deposition processes in the Iron Gate Reservoir depend on a large number of natural factors as the size and natural characteristic of the Danube Basin area upstream, its major tributaries, geomorphological and morphological characteristics of the Danube. But also there are man-made influences as controlled backwater regime of the Iron Gate hydropower plant. The backwater in the backwater zone of the Iron Gate, the upstream part, the influence of hydropower plant is relatively small and felt only during low to medium flows. Sediment transport during period of high flows is the same as in natural regime. Major influence are sediment delivery by the Tisa and the Sava and conditions on their mouths. The immediate or downstream part of the reservoir uh, <coughs> has uh, intensive sedimentation. The high sediment deposits are formed in one part of the reservoir which I'll present on the next slide. Immediate Iron Gate Reservoir, which is downstream of the kilometer 1075 or the mouth of the Nera River, hosts intensive sedimentation. The highest sediment deposits were formed between the kilometer 970 and 1003, which is in the vicinity of the town of Doni Milanovic, where the channel expansion in the Iron Gate Gorge acts as a natural sediment tra trap. All river cross sections in this area show significant change. There is a permanent increase of flood water levels upstream of the reservoir, which is induced by sedimentation. At the area of Belgrade, it is presently 
about half a meter downstream up to one meter. And this issue is very important because these are lowlands of Serbia where the life itself depends on the protection from floods. In 2006, there was an extraordinary difficult flood defense because many cities along the Danube were endangered by extremely high water levels. And this flood defense lasted for two months and it was uh, very important to build new levees above the existing because the uh, flood levels were about design. The problem of the ice on the Danube and its tributaries is known, including relatively frequent critical situations. The construction of two dams and the operation of hydropower plant change the natural conditions of ice formation and movement. Monitoring is organized during cold winters in order to obtain relevant data and establish appropriate techniques for ice control in the backwater zone and coordination with neighboring countries. These are the pictures from the recent uh, winters in 2012 and 2017 when we had very serious conditions of ice, especially uh, upstream of Belgrade. And these red areas show that the ice defense lasted for one month and, and more. The reservoir had the impact on the forests in the vicinity. On minor and downstream parts, forests are devastated after the impoundment. Upstream, the impact was monitored at the number of points. These are these red points within the reservoir range. 40 years of monitoring revealed that these upstream forests endured pro prolonged flooding. This slide presents sites for monitoring of soil salinity within the Kovin Dobovac area. This program revealed that process of soil salinization is weaker than expected by area and intensity. Monitoring of flood structures during and after high flows due to high flood risk of low lying riverine areas is a permanent and very important task. After 2006, a reconstruction to meet higher design flood levels started. It was expected that the water quality in the reservoir be, will be lower because of high water levels, low velocities, reduced purification capacity, and it was also anticipated that sedimentation might threaten the ecosystem due to accumulation of hazardous and harmful substances. That is why the water and sediment quality is monitored every year on a number of points which are presented in this map. Regular monitoring of water and sediment quality started in 1985. Presently, we are doing uh, twice a year sampling and analysis for eight sampling sites and twice per year at 12 sites on the longer river reach. The investigations also include hydrobiology, phytoplankton, zooplankton, bottom fauna, phytobentos, and a large number of quality parameters. It can be stated that the water quality is still satisfactory due to high capability of self-purification, although it changes as a consequence of incoming load, hydrological conditions and water temperature. Nature of water habitat has changed, both in composition and population density. Monitoring of still and active landslides in total and 26 location and other riverbank instability phenomena is done on the right bank of the Danube every year. 
There is a large number of historical monuments, including 2,000 years old Neolithic settlement of Lepinski Vir and numerous monuments from Roman times. Particular efforts were made to save these monuments from raised water levels. There are also important medieval cities along the reservoir impacted by high water levels where protection had to be done. There is an abundance of natural resources along the banks of the Danube. These are oases on conserved nature, including rich and diverse plants and animal life and resources under special protection. Large aerial entities were protected by declaring a special regime, including marshland of Kovil and Petrovadin, Obed wetlands, Dubovac marshland, and the Jerdab National Park. There is also one new area which was created by the Iron Gate 1 dam construction, and now it is the important stop oversight and wintering area that attracts the largest congregations of water birds anywhere in the region. But it must be mentioned that the Iron Gate dams interrupted the fish migration and there are coordinated activities in the recent times where Serbia is cooperating with the Romanian side, the ICPDR and other international institutions regarding restoration of fish migration for sturgeons and other species. At the end of this part, some conclusions. The hydropower and navigation system, Iron Gate 1 and Iron Gate 2, is one of the largest in Europe. The objectives of the Iron Gate project, which is utilization of the considerable water energy potential and improvement of navigation conditions on previously very dangerous Serbian-Romanian section of the Danube, are completely achieved. In the operation period, this system has proved its necessity. Without the production of this system, the energy supply of Serbia and Romania could not be realized at all. The navigation conditions are also completely improved because the navigation is possible all over the year and all previous constraints and dangers have been suspended. On the other hand, the hydropower and navigation system or these two dams has a major environmental impacts which are permanently monitored. The monitoring program provides information and data on the status of the reservoir and the riparian belt as well as on the efficiency of protective measures. The recommendations are given for additional works and measures and assessments of possible alterations of hydropower plant's operation mode. There is a need for continuing monitoring of these impacts on both the reservoir and the riparian land under the existing or modified program. Pro also, some good things have to be mentioned. The ice regime is better in the reservoir than it was in natural regime. The slope stability is less compromised than expected. There are good environmental conditions, such as establishing or promoting the extraordinary natural quality areas. Uh, infrastructure is constructed in the riparian areas, roads, municipal objects, and gives a great contribution to the region development and also the system for protection of riparian lands provides good conditions for agricultural production. The second part of this presentation is on the effects of the Zvornik Reservoir on the Drina River environment. The Drina River is the largest tributary of the Sava River, which is in turn the largest tributary of the Danube. The Drina itself has the surface area of 19,680 square kilometers and spreads over the territories of three main riparian states, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia and Montenegro. Also, a very small part is in Albania. This river basin is large, prevalently mountainous, with only lowlands near the mouth to Sava, 
it is mostly uh, covered by forests and has a very dense hydrographic network. Terrain in the Dirina River Basin significantly changes from the upper part towards its confluence to the Sava at the north. The southern part is hilly and mountainous, particularly in the Montenegro. The northern parts are plains of Semveria and Machua. On these slides you can see the difference between the upper and middle course and its lower course where the liver has alluvial character. At the upper end of the lower Drina course, the hydropower plant Zvornik was built in 1955. After that, 10 years later, another hydropower plant on its middle course was built. It is by Nabashta. And the last one is hydropower plant Pishagrat on the upper course built in 1988. The initial volume of this reservoir was 95 million cubic meters. Until 66, when the upstream by Nabashta reservoir was built, the reservoir lost 30% of its initial volume. The latest survey was done in 2005 and revealed that its volume is reduced to 41 million cubic meters, which means that more than 50% is filled with sediment. The sedimentation is clearly visible since large islands and bars are formed. Since the Zvornik Dam completely interrupted the bed load inflow into lower Drina section, it suffers from the lack of sediment. The riverbed is extremely unstable and has irregular changes. Manifestations of fluvial erosion are very visible and intense and banks may shift for tens of meters in a very short time. Erosion of outer banks is present on almost all river curved reaches. The sediment deposition in the form of large sediment bars is a parallel process on all inner banks. Of course, there are other things that influence this extreme river behavior. There are irregularity of hydrological and hydraulic characteristics of the stream due to how hydropower plant operation. Also geological composition and geomechanical characteristics of the terrain where the alluvial deposits are 12 meters thick. Also the exploitation of sand and gravel from the riverbed and various structures that may influence the flow pattern. At the end, all this sediment reaches the Sava and forms a huge sediment bar on its mouth. This sediment bar is an obstacle for the flow of the Drina and also the Sava, where navigation is endangered due to this uh, bar, which is narrowing the navigation channel and uh, provides the, the obstacle for the specially upstream navigation. Third part of this lecture is about the deepening of the Velika Morava riverbed. The Morava river basin is the largest national river basin in Serbia. It covers 43% of the country. It drains the southwestern part of Serbia and the Verica Morava is the largest river formed by confluence of two rivers, the Južna and Zapadna Morava. It is also the right tributary of the Danube within the Iron Gate 1 reservoir. The Velika Morava is the lowland alluvial river. It used to be a meandering river, but after training works which included 16 meander cutoffs, the length of the river is reduced by approximately 20%. And also important information, it was used as a source of gravel for construction for many decades. The most downstream part of Velika Morava is heavily regulated. It has the embankments on both river banks on the length of about 30 kilometers and many river structures within the riverbed. 
the water levels in the river are dropping in the last decades. It, they are measured at the gold station Ljubičevski most, about 22 kilometers upstream of its mouth. And from 1950s up to today, the water levels dropped approximately four and a half meters. At the same time, uh, the suspended sediment transport was reduced from 6 million tons in 60s to present 2 million tons, according to the observation at the same Ljubičevski Most Gold Station. Also, the lowering of the groundwater table in the river Rhine areas of this section of Velika Morava is observed, and it causes the huge water supply problems in the nearby huge water source. Riverbed degradation is going on, and we know that it is caused by training of the riverbed, the cutoff of meanders and river structures on both banks, which result in deepening of the riverbed. And also that the sediment regime is the cause of that because it is changed due to retaining of the sediment in the number of reservoirs built in the river basin, the change land use pattern in the river basin, the huge amount of anti-erosion measures and permanent dredging of sand and gravel. But still, we don't know which measures can be taken to prevent further degradation of the riverbed. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer.